What is up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? This is Kane, the Hurricane McMillan. I'm here to bring you guys your round number two in Fan of Best. Today we have Caleb Coho versus Eli McCaig in this round two matchup, but I'm not here alone. I am here today with the commissioner, the emperor, the grunchy, grumpy man, Tim Smith. What's up? Uh, first order of business, fire you. Um, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. This ought to be... Uh... A pretty good matchup, I think, is going to be, honestly, from the tournament so far, I think this is going to be the most evenly matched. I guess you could say with uh, with competitor-wise in this tournament, with with these two, I think it's going to be the most matched and probably the most closest. Um, it's possible. I mean, it's kind of hard to be closer than Caleb's last match because both competitors put up like a 72% accuracy rate, so that is very close. But, I mean, Eli is the guy who no one expected him to even be in the tournament. And now he's made it to round two, defeating Grant and Gregory, of all people. And he's here today. And I think Caleb is just another person in Eli's way today. But Caleb wants to prove himself more than anyone. Um, but, yeah, any final things you want to say? Um, No, I mean, with these two, I think we've been down the road for how they got here. For what, what they've shown so far for all their matches i really can't wait to get into this with these two to really see who's going to come out ahead either a king or a show no one expected me to make it this far in the tournament against ryan and i'm not stopping now the king has a reign and a throne to sit upon and i need to get there now i will take out anyone i have to everyone i have to and eli is no one who even is eli the showman not much of a showing against a guy who was literally drugged by Ryan Firmison, Grant Gregory. And it doesn't matter the five-way. Your five-way was a joke, buddy. Like, you had no business getting here. You've had the easiest road here. And now your road there stops with me. Good luck getting past me. I'm going to sit on my throne. Here we go. So the showman is here. The showman is ready to prove to the king that he doesn't deserve to be wearing that crown. That's right, if we all remember the There Will Be Geek live show that happened, I easily destroyed Caleb Coho. So I think that's a very good assessment on how I can go up against Caleb Coho. And I just have to say this as well. Oh, he thinks I'm nothing? Sure, the five way, the other people in the match were a joke. But if you look at that match, I was able to score 28 points. I was able to KO and TKO everyone in that match. Then I went up against Grant Gregory, and I TKO'd him. It doesn't matter if he doesn't believe that I deserve to be here, because all that matters is that I believe I deserve to be here, and I know that I deserve to be here. Caleb Coho is just another person in my freaking way, and after I beat him, I'm going to go on to the semifinals, and then I'm going to go on to the finals, and I'm going to be the Fandom Fight Champion. It doesn't matter who he is, and it doesn't matter who else I have to go up against. I am the showman. I'm ready to put on one damn good show. Don't get in my way. All right, Tim. Those were our competitors. And I think that was a very uh, strong word from both of them. Both of you guys love to talk smack anyways, so that's nothing new. But, Tim, would you like to send us to our proper introductions? <clears throat> Introducing first. He is coming in with a record of one win, zero defeats, and one TKO. Representing Apocalypse. He is the king, Caleb Coho. And his opponent, making his way to the ring with a record of two wins, zero defeats, with four TKOs and one KO. He is representing the Book of Eli, the showman, Eli the Let's get this show. Easily uh, beat me? Come on, easily? 
I was in second place, like... Hey, hey, hey. You guys had your chance to talk, but now this is time to play. <laughs> you guys have done the talking. Now let's see if you guys can do the walking. In round number one, you'll get 10 questions from pre-selected categories. If a competitor has a perfect round, they will receive a bonus question because we're that nice. Competitors must write down and say their answers. There's no ceiling in this round. Competitors are allowed three repeats during the match. Unless it's a technical repeat, we'll give you that one. Uh, competitors are also allowed one challenge during the match. If you award the challenge, you get the challenge. But if you lose the challenge, you lose the challenge for the rest of the game. Competitors, do you have any questions? Did you just drink an energy drink before you read those instructions? Because that was really fast. Uh, maybe. All right. So your first question is going to come from the category of the MCU. Name both years in which the MCU only released a single movie. It's very interesting because the MCU is known for releasing multiple movies for multiple paychecks. You know, that is very true. But I'm going to give you guys a five count in five, four, three, two, one. Markers down. I'm going to start with Eli. 2010 for Iron Man 2 and 2004 for the Avengers. He's showing off, but that is correct. And Caleb. 2010 and 2012. Hey, look at this. Going back and forth there. Nice. All right, gentlemen. Your next question is in the realm of Middle Earth. What name does Aragorn go by while he is at while he is in the Prancing Pony? You know, Caleb is wearing a crown. Uh, Lord of the Rings has a lot of like, kings. You think that might help him in this scenario? Aragorn wasn't self righteous and uh you know that's true but yeah aragon is fantastic caleb is just the king and what do you guys a five count five <laughs> four three two it's me you have the king and immediate Mark it down caleb i said frodo baggins i have no idea no <laughs> eli strider that is correct and you know what nice. eli this just in robert parker likes you more than caleb <laughs> All right. Robert's a loser. Come on. Your next question is Ooh. in to the future. This is a bit of a softball. What is the last line in Back to the Future? No matter what, he still throws out his shame on to the Hobbit. Poor Robert Parker. You know what? Here's the thing. I remember those days when Caleb beat Robert by a TKO. TKOs were hard to get. Yeah, yeah. Five, four, I tried to forget that. Three, two, one. Markers down. I'm going to go to Eli. This is probably wrong, but we're going in style. That is incorrect. Caleb. Roads? But we're going. We don't need roads. That is correct. And we have a tight game again. Well. Well, no one's given that, getting that 11th question. Nope. I do think this category will break that tie, hopefully, of the favorite category in all of fandom, kaiju movies. In kaiju, what is the full name of the Jaeger piloted by Nate Lambert and Jake uh, Pentecost? Have you seen uh, this movie? Pacific Rim? I've done research on it. I haven't fully seen it, but I love those explain series that explain things I don't really care to look at. Hmm. Five, four, three, two, one. Marker is down. We're going to go to Caleb. I believe this is Gypsy Danger. That is incorrect. Eli. I haven't seen it. Oh. We were looking for Gypsy Avenger. Gypsy Danger is the one from Pacific right. Rim 1. Right. For the one that was piloted in Pacific Rim 2. Uprising, Uprising sucks. Uprising sucks. Uh, just because it's a bad film. Did not make it invalid. I know, not but Ryan. I... Oh, God. <laughs> not Ryan. Next this question is in scores and soundtracks. What is the only Disney film to be composed by John Williams? Oh, uh, one of the greats. Star Wars. That is going to be incorrect. Don't be a smartass. You're looking for Disney animated or Disney live action or Disney anything animated? that has a Disney title on it. Okay. And if you get this wrong, gentlemen, I'm gonna cry a little bit on the inside. Yes. Five, 
four, three, two, one. Marker is down, Caleb. I quickly nice. Jane Fonded Mars Needs Moms, which is completely incorrect. That is incorrect. And Eli. I said Rockets of the Year. That is also incorrect. We were looking for the BFG. Yeah. Uh, right. Oh, that wasn't Disney, wasn't it? Yes, Gross. Because of Steven Spielberg. Of and after five questions, we are still tied at two apiece. Shoot. Ooh. Forgot BFG was just burn here. Oh, yeah. All right. Going into your next question, gentlemen, in the realm of DC. What is the password to get into the Batcave in Lego Batman? I love this movie. I have still have got to see this game. Still got to see it. Stop what you're doing right now. Leave this call and go watch it. Actually, All no, right. Oh, I really need. To. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna give you guys a five count. Five, four, three. Repeat the question. Two. All right, this is gonna be your first repeat. All right, in the realm of DC, what is the password to get into the Batcave in Lego Batman? Again, uh, fantastic movie. Uh, don't go to work today. Watch it. Finish the stream. <laughs> I'm pretty sure movie. I have to go to work tonight. Three, if you love Batman, two, you love Lego Batman. One. Marker is down. I'm going to go to Eli. At home? That is incorrect. And Kendall. I said, hey, pewter. That is also incorrect. Sam, would you like to reveal the answer? Is it I'm Batman? One of the best smart-ass answers of all time. And this is for any of them. Iron Man sucks. Oh, oh that's yeah. awesome. I remember now. Okay, yeah. All right. I haven't seen the movie in a while. The barn banner continues. <laughs> Next category is in Disney. Who directed the film? Saving Mr. Banks. Ooh, Have you ever had to save someone look. named Mr. Banks? No, but I had to save someone called Mr. Timothy Smith. <laughs> You won't let that round three mistake go, will you? Oh, no, I was just saying, uh, not a round three mistake, I was just saying I saved you. I, you know, I'm super oh, happy. just in general? Yeah, five, four, three, two, one. All right, I'm gonna go to Caleb. Is that Robert Zemeckis? That was not Robert Zemeckis, even though that'd be very interesting. Eli. I said Ron Howard. Ooh, we were looking for John Lee Hancock. You know, We've never gotten him. That one dude that everyone doesn't know, right? Yeah, never, <laughs> never would have thought. It. That one guy that directed like <laughs> Saving, that one guy who directed Saving Mr. Banks, you know? Yeah. yeah. Jeez. But hey. I thought you were about to say awesome. Saving Private Ryan. I was like, that's not a movie. All right, gentlemen, your next category is in Marvel. Who played Foggy Nelson in Daredevil? All right, you think this question might get the competitors back on the board? They're on a little drought right now. I think this one could. It, it honestly could. Have you seen the I, TV I, show, Mr. I Run TV? Oh, the Daredevil TV show is just pure heaven. It really Four. is. It is. Three, two, one. Let's go to Eli. John Favreau. That is correct. Nice. And Caleb. Finally! John Favreau. That is also correct. And hey, we're still tied. Hey, hey, your next question is going to be in the category of the DC EU. What is Lex doing when we are first introduced to him in Batman v Superman: Dawn of Justice? Or the rushing of a movie? Um, I mean, this movie is terrible. So, hey, I like it. Hey, Eli, it's now uh, Caleb has taken the lead because you lost five points. Five. Wow! Oh, repeat the question. Three. Caleb using his second repeat in round one. Question is, what is Lex doing when we are first introduced to him in Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice? Right. There, there are some fun things about this movie, but I, I will grant Batman? it is a big mess. Five, four, That's a lot to write. three, two, one. Markers down. I'm gonna go to Caleb. I said he's convincing a senator to let him bring in kryptonite into the country and eating hard candies. I can't accept that. Eli. He's playing basketball in Lex school. He is playing basketball. Okay. 
Man, I have taken the lead, and we have one question left in round number oh, one. Oh, thank goodness. All right, your last question in round number one is in the category of Pixar. In thank Pixar. God. What Disney princess is the only one to be released under the Pixar title? And we are looking for the name. Okay. And I literally, I literally wrote this. Right. Tried to figure out how to word this Four. question in my own bank. Three. So thank you for writing. Two. You, uh, well, King I guess I'm very happy. One. Martha's down. <laughs> um, let's go to Eli. Princess Merida. That was Princess Merida and Caleb. Uh, Merida from Brave. That is also correct. And that is the end of round number one. And Eli is in the lead with five points. Caleb is in the. Right behind him with four, so it's still anyone's game. And round number two will work like this. Each competitor, will, each competitor will be given a wheel spin. If it lands on a category they like, they can keep it, or they can choose to spin again. If the competitor spins again, they must keep whatever it lands on. Five questions. They'll get five questions worth two points apiece, and they'll be asked from the selected category. A competitor can go to multiple choice, bringing the question to one point that there is stealing in this round. If a player lands on opponent's choice, they cannot spin again. Any questions? Nope. All right, I'm going. How to many go. monsters have you had? Um, all none. of them. None. Oh. None. I am not able to drink a monster. Yep, and Caleb is a monster. But hey, this is your wheel, Eli. You are in the lead. And would you like to spin first? Your teammates, the monsters, drugging people. I would like to spin first. All right. Before I spin, I want to let you know the categories on the wheel. It's James Bond, DCEU, Middle Earth, Wizarding World. Marvel, DC, Pixar, and Disney. And there's also player's choice and a bonus <laughs> choice. You right. stacked that wheel against me there, didn't you? It's all <laughs> selected by random. I know it is. All right. The spin is in, Eli, and it lands on opponent's choice. Oh, beautiful. Oh. Right. What are the options? Okay, I can read them again. Read them. Is it Marvel, DC, Pixar, Disney, James Bond, DCEU, Middle Earth, and Wizarding World? Let's go James Bond for you, Eli. All right, All Eli, right. I will be issuing your James Bond questions. First question is, what card game is James Bond playing as we are first introduced to him in Dr. No? Baccarat. That is correct for two points. Ooh, nice. I made a mistake. <laughs> All right, the next I've question I've seen is, all the James Bond movies. So, okay. All right, what, next question is, what was the last time we see Sean Connery play the character of James Bond? Mm, okay. Okay, he played it. He played him in the '80s. Are you going for that movie or in the? Just the last time he plays the character of James Bond. Okay, I'm just gonna say. Uh, what is that movie? What is? You only live twice. That is incorrect. Okay. Uh, never right. say never again. That is correct for two points. Oh, big that two points. That was the one in the 80s, by the way. Yeah, I was thinking, I didn't know how you were going to go with that. I was willing to lose two points for that. All right. The next question is, what two countries is Elliot Carver trying to start World War III with in Tomorrow Never Dies? Which two countries want to start World War III with? Yes. Multiple choice. All right. Is it A, Britain and the USA? B, Britain and China? C, Germany and the USA, or D, Germany and China? Britain and China. That is correct for one point. Nice. All right. Going on that lead. Next question is, the character of Max Denby goes under what alias? Multiple choice. All right. Is it A, A, B, B, C, C, or D, D? Um, repeat. Repeat the question. Alright, the character of Max Denby goes under what alias? I'm going to have to give you a five count. Five, four, three, C. two. C is correct for one point. Alright, your final question in James Bond. Who plays M in Goldeneye? Judy Dench. That is correct for two points. Nice. So Eli landed on opponent's choice, was given James Bond, who no one has really wanted except for Jake Marangoni, and he survives it. He's at 11 but, points, and it's Caleb Finner. 
I'll be honest, when I saw James Bond, I was like, all right, either he can say, I thought you were going to say Wizarding World, honestly. I, I like, thought oh, you were strong at those. So I was like, I was like, ugh. All right. Well, let's so see I was like, that okay. Is. Yeah, let's so see if that backfires or not. Is nothing you weak at? This is your spin. Okay, let's hit it. James Bond is off the table. And it lands on the DCE. Would you like to keep it? Here's the question. How deep are these questions at at this point? I cannot tell you. I know. There's a lot on the wheel that I don't like this time, so I'm gonna keep it. I'm, I'm gonna keep it. I'll keep it. Tim will give you your questions from the DCEU. All right, Caleb, your first question in the DCEU. What am I waiting for? I'm stupid. What is the name Clark went by while he was working in the Arctic? Multiple choice. Is it A, A, Joe, B, Bob, C, John, or D, Bill? John. That is incorrect. Eli, a one point steal if you get it. Joe. That is correct for one point. All right, Caleb, your second question in DCEU. Who plays General Ludendorff in Wonder Woman? Oh, what is his name? Dang it. I'll know when I hear it. Multiple choice. All right. Multiple choices. A, Ewan Bremner. B, Danny Houston. C, David. Danny Houston. Thank you for finishing that. That is correct for one point. I don't have to screw up David's last name. All right. Your third question. Which Robin costume does Bruce have in the Batcave? You mean what Robin? Yeah. Which what Robin costume? Uh, Jason Todd. That is correct for two more points. Caleb trying to catch back up. Let's see if he can keep going with his fourth question. What member of the Suicide Squad is the first to die? Um. I mean. Slipknot. That is correct for two more points. <laughs> I had to think about that for a hot second. All right. All right, Caleb, your last question. In Justice League, we are first introduced to the character of Mira. Who, play, who plays her? What is Johnny Depp's wife's name? God dang it. Five. Four. Multiple three. choice just to be safe. A. Blake Lively. B. Lily James. C. Robin Wright. Or D. Amber Heard. Amber Heard. That is correct for one point. And Johnny Depp, you are one lucky son of a bitch. I believe Technically, they're divorced. they're divorced. Yeah. They are divorced, but that's how I know her. Well, right. still. But hey, after round two, after Caleb's round, we are all tied up at 12 apiece. Just saying. Nice. So we're going into round three. God, in a really? very interesting scenario. God. Round three is going to work like this. Each competitor will be given five questions and five categories. They'll be given a category you must bet from zero to two points. If the competitor reaches zero points or is mathematically eliminated, the winner will be awarded a TKO. Answers must be written down and spoken. Same with the bets. You must specifically see the bets. All right. Any questions? Nope. All right. All right. I will be giving you guys your first question in round number three. It's going to be in the category of Marvel. How much would you guys like to bet? Write it down and then show me. This is going to be pretty interesting, Kane, with both of these guys tied up. Round three is going to be good. Yes, I think it's going to be a very close match. As you predicted, I'm going to go to Caleb. How much are you betting? I'm betting one, just because I know you're going to be evil. <laughs> and Eli, how much are you betting? Two. Two. Okay. Your question is, who directed Men in Black 2? Yeah, I got to admit, when I found out this was a Marvel film, I kind of freaked out. I love Men in Black. It's so great. Yeah, it, it is a fun. It's just a fun four, movie in general. Three, two, one. Markers down. I'm gonna go to Eli first. Barry Stevenson. 
Ooh, we cannot accept that. Caleb. You had Barry, but it's Barry Sewenfield. That yeah. is correct. That means Caleb has now taken a three-point lead going into the second question. Uh, your second category is in Pixar. How many points would you both like to wager? CK and I can learn. Yay. Hey, hey after the, the last time, you know, you gotta... <laughs> Sure. We're gonna go to Eli first. Two. Two. And Caleb. Two. Alright. Alright, gentlemen. Your question in Pixar. How did Ernesto de la Cruz die in Coco? Have you seen this movie? How specific do you mean? There's a very specific way he died. I know, but I'm wondering how specific you're going to get. Just tell us how he died. It, honestly, it's on Netflix, Kane, and I really have to watch this. So you haven't watched it. You're an uncultured spine or spine, whatever it's called. And we're going to give you guys five count. Oh, so my God. Four, three, two, one. Markers down. All right, Caleb, let's start with you. He's crushed on stage. By like the set, whatever. Or, you know the we'll bags or whatever. Eli, we'll see what Eli wrote. I put a heart attack out there. We were looking for a crushed by a giant belt, but it was crushed on stage. So yeah. we will okay. give you the points. Thank you. That's why I was like, how specific do you want to get? Okay. All right. Just to give you guys a quick update, Eli is now at eight and Caleb is at 15. So we are now at a seven point differential. Yeah, seven point differential. It's getting a little tight here. Next question is going to be from the category of Star Trek. I kind of wonder where both competitors will go with Star Trek. I kind of wonder. Yeah. I'm going to start with Caleb. How much are you betting? I'll bet one. All right, Caleb is betting one. Eli. One. One? Okay. Your question one. is, what is the name of the character who joins the Enterprise at the end of Star Trek Beyond? I thought it was a very good conclusion for the new trilogy of movies. Yeah, I really like that film. Like a lot of people don't like it, and I thought it was fun. Yeah. I mean, honestly, as as a Star Trek fan, right. it's the closest to Over. a Star yeah. Trek adventure. Yeah, I liked how it wasn't universe yeah. ending. It was markers just, ending. Yeah. Well, not markers ending. Markers down. I'm going to go to you. Markers. I said it's Jayla. That was Jayla, and that is a point. And Caleb. Jayla. All right. By both question, by both competitors only betting one and both getting it right, lead doesn't change, and we're at seven. And the next question will be given to you by Emperor Tim. Actually, the next category goal. first is in Star Wars. How oh, many points good. will you bet? Done by kind Emperor of kind of uh, fitting for uh, Kane's description of me. Well, you also have Star Wars posters behind you, so it's fitting for you as well. Yes. From the start to the death of the franchise. All right, Eli. Two. All right. And Caleb. Zero. All right. All right, gentlemen. Your question in Star Wars: Name both of the actors who helped bring Maul to the screen in Solo: A Star Wars Story. And the king playing very smart, not betting and making Eli go to him. Very smart. Yeah, but for, for, for Caleb's stats purposes, he might want to guess this one. I'm going to give you guys a five count. Five. I will, I will guess. Four. Three. Two. Anyway. One. Marker's down. All right. Let's go to Eli first. Sam Whitworth and Ray Park. That, that is correct points. for two points. Caleb, you bet zero, but go ahead and surprise. Ray Park and Sam Whitler. Also correct. Wishing he would have bet points, maybe. Well, and your winner. Yeah. I'm not. The king, Caleb Coho. I'm not mad that I didn't bet any points. <laughs> uh, because Caleb was in a very interesting scenario, because if he would have at least bet one point, it would have at least could have been a potential, but it was actually mathematically eliminated because there's a five-point differential going to the very last question. And Caleb, you have done it. You have slain the guy who is essentially 
have been almost unstoppable lately. Um, Eli just had a little rub, tough time right there in round number three. But you know what? I thought this was a very fun match. Um, sometimes round three, it gets you. Can't always bet big. Um, I want to go to Emperor Tim. What did you think of this match? Honestly, very, very close going all the way to round three. And Eli just had a couple big bets he could cash in on. The King played it very smart, like he usually does with round three. And as soon as he got that lead, it was just basically going on cruise control to play that leader role to see how he does. And he was able to pull it out. So yeah, I mean, very, they, very they good. Went into kudos three tied. I mean, and then yeah. Caleb was able to get that first question right to create that four-point differential. And then it was all she wrote almost because – Caleb just he bet big on the questions he knew and bet small in the categories he was the greatest. So yeah. you know what? I thought that was a good round between both competitors. I think Eli's gonna come back. I mean he he's now two and one, and honestly, he was the first competitor to get to two and oh. So at the end of the day, that's pretty good, if I don't say so myself. Um I think Eli is we'll see back hundred yeah, percent. But and also four TKOs. I mean come on. Yeah, four TKOs, one actual KO. He's the only competitor to, to actually get a full on knockout. Like that right there is something fantastic. Um, oh yeah. But I have to do this. Um, it pains me to say it. The king, you've won today. You are now going to the semi-finals of the Phantom Fights tournament, and you will either play Jessica Morgan or her very strong opponent that everyone knows the name of. Who would you rather play? Look. I'm going to beat whoever comes at me. I am the king. I need a belt. And this is this is the league that I can do it in. And um, look, if I'm, if I'm being completely honest, I want Jessica Morgan. Because uh, let's be honest, after seeing that Full Metal 5-way that I was in, she's not as uh, unbreakable or unbeatable as uh, people think. I think I'm stronger in the areas that she's weak in. I think I can actually take her. But let's be real. It's probably not going to be Jessica Morgan that I face. And when that happens, you can bet I'll be polishing my crown while watching every movie eligible for fandom fights to take on the other opponent. That is a very interesting fact. Um, you know what? That is a match that I cannot wait to see, but I'm going to have to go to Eli. You were the first person to go 2-0. and You were the first person to get a knockout. You were tied going into round three. You got your strength, and... Some in distance way your way, man. I'm sorry, but any what are your thoughts on today? I don't know what that says. No words. He has no words for Eli McKay. The showman has been silenced by the king. So you it's know not what? the greatest show for you today, buddy. Uh, one may say that, but you know what? I guess there's no words for the showman. I I feel bad. I feel bad. But you know what? The King has won. The King is going to the semifinals. And I never thought I'd say this, but holy crap, he's doing it. Caleb Coho, the man who was struggling to get wins, is now in the semifinals. What has the world come to? It's gone. It's the apocalypse. I don't know what to say. He's a part of it. What, what have you done? What have you done? I don't know. I, sh I should just disappear. Um, Tim, I want to send it back to you. It's like you said, like. From struggling to get wins when we first has ever seen him, now he's on a tear as the king. And Eli, who is very strong in the force of geek chic, I guess you could say, the force not being good to him today. I don't know what the world's coming to. It's like, it's like up is down, black is white, the sky is purple. I don't. I don't know anymore. I don't like. Know. Holy God, what does the world come to? Next thing you know, it's like people are going to start turning heel, like Robert Parker and Jake Marangoni, all these faces in the league. They're going to start turning heel. I don't know what to expect, but all I'm going to say this has been a fantastic match. And I'm going to wrap this up right here. I'm going to say this has been Kane to Hurricane McMillan, and I'm going to send it to Working Good Kids Find You at Caleb Coho.
Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Caleb Coho. That's K A L E B K O H O. Caleb Coho on YouTube, where I do all my music stuff. Coho Productions on YouTube, where I do all my film stuff. My group, The Forks, just dropped our debut album, Super Teens, back in February. Uh, so if you're into rap music, you can get that on all your digital stores and streamers, wherever you consume your digital music. And you can find me right here on Multiplex Entertainment, continuing to the semifinals and uh, hosting this show right here with my friend, Kane. All right, Eli, are you still silent? Do you want people to find you? No words. I'm sorry to think it's, oh, it's just, it said one second. You gotta listen to the showman. All right, you can find him at Twitter, at Mr. Eli McKay, or Eli Mac. Facebook at Eli McCaig. Go check out Eli because you know what? He's silent, but I don't think he's going to be silent on the internet because no one ever is. And Tim, where can the kids uh, find you? At? That's very simple. Right here on Multiplex on, on YouTube and Facebook, Multiplex Entertainment. Remember to ask to join the group, pick your divisions, go on YouTube, find the channel, support it, like, comment subscribe all that fun stuff you can find us on twitter at multiplex yt and you can find us on instagram at multiplex entertainment network all that good stuff all right and i've been came to hurricane slash stock footage mcmillan and, and you can find me across the internet at k97 the 97 is roman numerals with xcvii and apparently i need to chill out on the energy drinks i had my first red bull today and I, I don't know. Maybe it's probably kicking in. I don't know. But I, you guess what? You guys check us out on Multiplex. And I'm Kane. I'm signing off. And now you can see us later. And peace out. Bye. What is up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? It's Sock Fudge McGee bringing you guys your stats for the match. In this round number two match, we have Eli McKay taking on Caleb Coho. And Caleb would take the win, even though going four for 10 for one of the worst round one ratings that we've had so far, putting up only 40%, but Eli wouldn't do much better, only going 5 for 10. Both competitors would go 4 for 2 in round number 2, and then in round number 3, this is where it all changed. Caleb would not miss a single question, while Eli would go 50%, going 2 for 4, and finishing 11 for 19 for 57%, and Caleb would go 12 for 19 for 63%. Eli would actually knock himself off the Phantom Fight Top 5 Accuracy of All Time with his performance today. And both competitors would maintain their all-time points of all time just because they played the most matches so far. This has been Sock for Jiggy, bringing you guys your stats for your match, and that is your top 12 right now. So go check that out. If you're in it, awesome. If you're not, cool. And we'll see you guys for Alex Warden versus Nico Suave Rigoli next. Peace out. Huh.